Welcome back to my darkroom. Today we're going to look at how to pre-flash your RA4 color prints in the darkroom. Well, this has been my most requested topic to cover, and that is pre-flashing, but for color prints. We went over this already with black and white, but some of you that have tried to apply that to color have found it doesn't quite work the same. So today we're going to look at what the differences are and how to do them and what kind of effects you can realistically expect. Now, as with all pre-flashing, it's not a miracle cure there's going to be some burning in that will still need to happen, but it will get you on the right foot so that you can get there a lot faster. Before we begin, however, uh, I would like to thank all my Patreons for their continued support. Those of you that have gone to my store and gotten t-shirts like these or my composition frames and all the other things, those do help support the channel so that I can get the color paper the color chemicals and spend the time doing this. So I do appreciate your support and those of you that would like to help support, links are down below. It is appreciated. All right, real quick, the difference between the pre-flash for a black and white and a color is that you need to get a neutral gray first. What I mean by that is, if all you do is put your diffusion under the lens with your negative in the top like we did with black and white, yes, that will get an even exposure over the whole paper, but it also evens out your color. So if your negative is, say, a landscape with lots and lots of green, you're going to be evening out a green color over the whole print, and so you will be slightly exposing the whole print to a green cast. And then you'll find that you have to try to get that out. But you've already exposed it. So, to avoid that, what we're going to do is take a blank color negative and we're going to make a neutral gray pre-exposure before we make the print on the same piece of paper. That's the secret to a good neutral color cast for your color print with the pre-flash. So we're gonna go over how to do that. Let's walk over to the enlarger and get set up. You can go about this one of two ways. You can go ahead and make your print, get everything set up with your color, your exposure, and then go back and do some pre-flash. Or if you already know from your contact sheet and hopefully you're making contact sheets, you'll already know which negatives may need some pre-flashing. In which case, you can go ahead and get set up for the pre-flash, make a few sheets, put them aside in a paper safe or uh, an old paper box, something like that, and then just have them aside for when you need them. Bear in mind, you probably want to make them just before the same printing session. I wouldn't make them weeks or months ahead. Uh, you can actually lose exposure over time if you don't use it. So, either way works fine. We're gonna go ahead and make a few, uh, maybe eight to 10 sheets of pre-flashed paper, which is a lot, but I've got two negatives I'm going to print. And we're gonna just put them into a paper safe, put them aside, and then use them once we have the other print ready to go, exposure and color-wise. So, to do this, get yourself a gray card. You should already have one somewhere in your camera kit. Uh, this one is just the smaller Kodak version. There is an eight by 10, this is the four by five. You just wanna make sure you have a good uh, neutral gray card. And don't just get a piece of gray map board. You really need a gray card for this, a photographic gray card. Uh, we're going to be making some exposures until we match this perfectly. It's okay for the, the pre-flash to go ahead and match density as well, or at least get close. We're going to change that, but we do want to get our color. This video is not gonna go over the basics of RA4 printing. If you want to see the basics, I've got a video up here. You can go and watch those. Make sure you also have a good 
color viewing light. Uh, I'm using one of my LED lights. It has a high CRI, has a daylight setting, and that's what I use. You can use whatever you need uh, to, to view your prints. We're going to be viewing the test strips we're about to make and your gray card together so you make sure you have the right color. Uh, get your gray card and now we need to get the enlarger set up. To do that, I've got somewhere a test negative. What do I do with it? Ah. Important lesson, clean your dark room, don't lose stuff. All right, this is a just empty blank frame of a color negative strip. Uh, to be honest, this is not even a blank frame. This is the end of the leader on a 120 roll that uh, the negative, I'm going, one of the negatives I'm going to print uh, has come from. Uh, it is not a 120 size piece of film, but it is a 35 millimeter piece of film. So first thing I'm going to do is put this in my enlarger with a 35 millimeter holder, which I've got right here. Okay, I've got my 50 millimeter lens. I wanna go ahead and just do this wide open. You can do a stop down. It doesn't really matter at this point. And I'm going to set my enlarger for two second increments. And color wise, uh, I think I'm just going to do um, 50 magenta and 50 yellow, just as a starting point. I really don't know where it needs to be, but this will just get us somewhere started. Uh, okay, uh, next step, let's turn out the lights and just make a test strip. So let's actually get an easel in here too. This will work just fine. Uh, so I'm just gonna do standard test strip, two second exposure. Uh, I am one stop closed on my lens and I've just got 50 magenta, 50 yellow. So let's make a test strip. All right, so here is my first test strip, nowhere near neutral gray. We're way too, uh, I'm gonna say red at this point. So we need to correct for that and you think I'd be more organized than this today, but I'm not. So I think it's too red. This would be the cyan. And that's not too bad. For now, I'm just going to be using, let's see, uh, two, four, six, I don't know, six or eight seconds. That's fine for this. I know that's not a pre-flash exposure, but I'm not too concerned about that. Okay, it might actually also be two magenta. Oh yeah, that's just more magenta than red in there. Okay, I think we're going to go up to um, yeah, we're gonna add 15 M. We'll leave the yellow there for now. Okay, let's make another test strip. Okay, still not there. Let me see this. So density is still a little off, but color is definitely still off. Uh, it's too blue at this point, so we're gonna check it out with the yellow. Oops, sorry. Uh, it's too blue, so I'm gonna check it out with the yellow. I'm gonna kinda hold these together. Yes, on the yellow. So I'm actually gonna change this 10 points. This time we're closer. Still a little too blue, so a little more yellow, or rather a little, yes, less yellow. 
so I'm actually a couple more test strips past, um, but I got it. And I wrote down my settings right here. So I've got the right color. Um, and so where I'm at is zero cyan, because I never change the cyan, 75 magenta and 56 yellow. So I'm going to write this down on a post-it note and probably just stick it up here on my enlarger. So when I need to do this, I can. Uh, I may also just write it on a, um, well, with my label maker and actually just stick it to a negative sleeve with this negative in here. That'll be the easiest thing to do. So now that I've got the color, I need to get the exposure. Uh, so we're gonna stop this lens down. See, I'm at four, so that's 5.6. 8, 11, yeah, 11, we'll go with 11. Uh, and now I'm going to change my time back to two seconds. So now what we're going to do, new test strip, but we're going to leave the color alone. I've got my neutral gray. I'm going to take my diffusion just to make sure I knock down the light. And just put that under the lens. All I'm looking for now is just like our black and white pre-flash, I'm looking for the longest amount of time that still does not build up any density at all. So I'm going to take a strip of paper. Let me get my test strip back here. So I'm going to take a strip of paper. We'll flip it upside down for uh, the sake of demonstration. With the, uh, well, it's blue paper, but we'll say white. Part of it, under the easel because I want a piece that is completely unexposed over the whole strip that will let me see the difference between blank white and exposure easier. And I'm just going to do a two second increment test strip just like any other test strip. And we're going to be looking for the very last blank section before there's any discernible tone. Okay. We might have to do this a couple of times to narrow it down to the absolute longest time we can get that's still blank white, but we're going to do that. So let's go ahead and hit these lights again. Let's do a test strip. Hopefully two seconds will get us somewhere in that range uh, with the increments. If it's still dark, uh, or rather we can see tone at everything, we'll stop the lens down a little bit more. Um, I've got a couple more stops I can go. If however the whole thing is white, we'll open it up a stop or two. Um, yeah, so we're ready. Let's get the lights and do this. Okay, now I realize you all may not be able to see this because the um, uh, the, the camera's gonna pick up just blank white, especially with my video light reflecting off this. So we're about three test strips in. So what I found was that for my setup, I couldn't see a difference between blank white and four seconds, but I could with six. So I know my time is somewhere between four and just under six. So I made another test strip that was four, five, and six seconds. With that, I could, of course, four was still blank, but five, I'm pretty sure had just a tiniest amount of tone. Six, of course, looked just like the other test strip. So now I'm pretty sure I'm between four and five seconds. So I did another test strip, this one here, that was four, 4.2, 4.4, 4.6, and five. And I can see tone at five. I can see tone at 4.8 and I can see the very bit of tone here at 4.6. So 4.4 is my longest time with the way I have everything set up here, where I can expose the paper, but not build any density whatsoever. So I'm going to set my timer for 4.4 seconds. And now I'm just going to take, uh, with the, all the lights out, I'm gonna take a piece of paper out, just expose the whole sheet for 4.4 seconds. I'm gonna do that for 10 sheets and just store them in my box here, just to keep them um, aside. And then we'll start making actual prints. 
So let me hit the lights. We're going to expose 10 sheets, set them aside. Okay, so I am now set up to make my print. I'm doing a contact sheet of an 8x10 negative. Um, and I'll be honest, it took me a while to find a negative that actually needed some pre-flashing because most of my stuff isn't done with extremes. Uh, to that point, I went and shot a frame, full daylight sun uh, with some deep shadow with texture and bright white siding on a house, hoping that I would get um, some blank white siding when I made the print and pre-flashing would help uh, bring that out. So I've got, uh, which one? This one. So this is my original print. Let me bring that a little closer for you. And I've got deep dark shadow here, but with texture. And then of course the bright white siding with brick. And here's my pre-flash. Um, I did this one before setting everything up here today. Uh, it didn't need any pre-flash. Now I tried it anyway just to see if there was any extra texture. There isn't. So color negative film and the uh, Fuji archive paper at least can deal with full sunlight pretty darn well all on its own without any help. Um, the only difference between these prints is a little bit of color balance difference because I didn't get my neutral gray perfect. It was just maybe one or two points to yellow. So my neutral grays in the uh, shed roof right here came out a little bit warmer than the other. That's why it's important to make sure you get a full neutral gray for your pre-exposure. So make sure you do that. Uh, that's perhaps the most important step if you don't want a color cast to your print because you will introduce one if you don't get a full neutral gray. So putting these aside, since clearly the negative didn't need to be um, need to be done. I have another negative. It's one that I shot a while ago, which is why I'm going to contact print an 8x10. Um, it's an interior of a barn, but there is clearly detail outside the window that was full sun. However, I think it's going to be too extreme. So let's make a contact print uh, test strip and see what we come up with first. All right, so just as I expected, We've got, um, of course, this is a test strip. So I'm looking at two, four, six, eight seconds. I'm probably going to give this seven seconds of exposure. And my color balance is pretty good. It's a little bit warm, but I kind of like that for this particular print. Um, by the way, the color settings here for both this print and the other one were almost exactly the same as the neutral gray. So getting that neutral gray or very close, because like I said, it was two points off. Um, they were almost exactly what I needed to get a color balanced print. So once you have that, you might be good to go, especially if you're using the same film uh, and the same processing. If you make changes in that, then you might have to start over. Okay, so we're going to do this for seven seconds. I take that back. That's actually two, four, six, eight, ten. So we're going to do eight seconds. <clears throat> um, that will keep the shadow detail, but I can see my windows are just blank white. So that should be a good candidate. So let's go ahead and just make the full print and see what we come up with. So here's my full print. Sorry, it's a little contrasty on uh, my monitor, so it might be on your screen as well. But I still have my detail down here under the work table. Um, but I am getting some pretty hot glare off the top of this vise and of course the window itself. So now we're going to just go ahead and take one of my pre-flashed pieces of paper and we're just going to make a print exactly the same setting, eight seconds, same color, no change whatsoever. And let's see what that looks like. If we find we need to make some tweaks then I've got the spare paper ready to go. 
but I think it might be all right, right out of the box. Here's hoping, so let's try it. I was lucky, at least I think I was lucky. I actually don't pre-flash a lot of color, um, but the exposure in the shadow areas is the same. No change there, same density overall. Um, the color balance is the same, so no changes there. But while it may look blank white on your screen, I actually have quite a bit of texture in the glass of the window that I didn't have before. Yes, I still need to burn because this is, uh, I believe, the sun right here. It's um, not even, like it might be just out of the frame, but looking on the negative itself, I can see some uh, texture in there. But I at least have a really good head start now for that burning. So that's really the only difference between this and black and white is that neutral gray pre-flash instead of just um, evening out your tones with the diffusion. The diffusion is really just to block the light uh, and to make sure there's no hot spots from the enlarger. But it's the neutral gray from a blank piece of film because that piece of film is what's going to give you that orange base to suck a lot of the red out of the tungsten balance bulb. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, we'll save this negative for other extreme examples. So let's go back over to the other side of the room and wrap this up. So you can see from the two examples, the highlight area in that really bright window is starting to come through. We can see texture in the glass that we couldn't previously. There's still some burning that needs to be done. Now there are other ways to print a negative with this extreme uh, and still get the contrast reined in. That would be something like a contrast reduction mask. That's a whole different video and we'll go over that sometime when I've got enough time to get set up for that. The results are not going to be a miracle. Uh, so have realistic expectations. All right, that's going to do it for this week. Thank you for watching. I hope that helps. So when you're making those prints, you can get that contrast rain in. Uh, and as always, we'll see you next time.